Hello again and welcome back to Wingot Plays Normie Factory. Today I'm looking to progress towards making the fusion reactor which will unlock the next chapter here and will allow us to get started to on the path to getting neutronium ingots. Neutronium ingots are required in order to get our creative tank because every step of the tier 10 microminer here needs neutronium but neutronium is also fairly slow to produce. So for now, let's see what we can do about working on this upright portion of our late game chapter. The, now the first step is we need to get superconductor wire. And in order to get superconductor wire, we need draconium, which we've already got draconium in the previous episode, or a little while ago, I think. And we need molten nether stars. Now we haven't automated the passive production of nether stars or the four tips, but if we take a look here, the tips are just the dusts, which we have automated, quartz, which we've got being made, and then the nether star core, which we should have no trouble with any of those. So let's go see what we can do about getting this crafting. Step one, let's go make the various uh, tips and cores and such. So we're going to need a few crafters. We'll need five by my count. And then we can just give them item conduits. And then they're all going to need limited item filters. Perfect. And then let's start with, well, let's start with North. We need two Aerothium and Nether Quartz. In fact, let's do this. Good. So, you, we need Nether Quartz. We are going to need five Nether Quartz in each of these. Weird. I, I, could... I don't know what happened to the limited item filter that I had here. Cool. So that one needs another quartz. Five. And lastly, this one. Good. Now, here we'll expose another quartz. Let's do 32. Just because of the quantity that we're going to be needing. And then all of these should get five nether quartz as soon as we set them to insert on brown. Perfect. And then we need aerothium dust as well. So this one needs. Uh, there's no chance I can look up just dust. I can look up air. I can look up theum dust though. So this one needs aerothium dust. Two of those. And I'm going to just grab a whole chunk of cobblestone. That didn't work. There we go. So that I could just do that. Good. Now, it's probably easiest just to get another interface and put it here and then set that one up to have each of our different dusts. I'm surprised that it's already connected actually. Huh, okay. Good, so this should now have aerothium dust coming in as soon as we told that that it can extract good and then we can set that to have top uh, north tip perfect so that'll work away now this one here we may as well do let's have a look let's see what's uh east east is pyrothium perfect so two of those you are going to be making that and then you just need to be inserting on brown Cool, this one can also insert on brown. It gets to have south is probably petrothium. Good. Insert. And then that just needs a perfect, good. And then the last one here is going to be cryothium, which the system does not have any of. That's where the filter went. 
wait um why you're not getting any other quartz you should be ah there we go good and then this is going to be our west perfect now we just need some drawers to put those into each with a downgrade and give me a key good perfect now all of these do get a downgrade. Good. Then we can get rid of these attachments here. There we go. Now all of these get to extract on black. In fact, for now we can just set these and they shouldn't actually extract because there's nowhere for them to go. Good. And then we can grab the North Stars, the East south and west and all of those are getting the outputs of these perfect now we all of those plus we need a core so you show me the core the core needs four nether quartz it needs the various rods I don't know. Okay, we need blaze rod. We need blitz rod. And blizz, basil's rod. And blitz rod. Good. Now we need one of each of these in here. And then we need a block of luminescence. Block of lumen double S. Okay, good. So that will be inserting a brown. Good. Now, this also can expose a block of luminescence, which we are going to have to craft. Okay, fine. Um, I thought I was. Luminescence is being made back there. I guess I'm not making a block anywhere. Okay, then we're going to need one more crafter. Here. Button conduit and uh, item filter, just a normal one, will do the job. And we can fill all of that. Good, now this gets to have luminescence inside on brown. Good, you, we can put it over into this one. And if it's gonna need nine at a time, then we, let's do 16. Good and block of luminescence. Perfect. Why... Why is that not running? That's extracting on brown. That's getting luminescence. I think it's connected the whole way through. Let us check on the cable then. It does look like it connects the whole way through, so why? Brown insert. Ah, oh, there we go, now it's working. Okay, draw key and draw down drag. Perfect. So you, you, and then we can grab those and put that there. Perfect. Now that doesn't need to be there. We do need another draw here. And we do want lots and lots of nether stars, but this will drain a lot of quartz. For now, we'll put a downgrade in and then we can change that later on. Now, if we take a look here, let's tell it to make another star go. Oh, this is going to be another core anyway, so that's fine. Perfect. So that gets to go there. Now that's waiting on nether quartz. So what I might do... Hmm, give me extra speed upgrades. And this can have some speed upgrades that hopefully 
should improve the throughput of everything here. And then this here can also have a couple of upgrades. Good. Now, petrothium, okay. I think, yeah, cryothium is the thing that we're generally going to be short on. But in the meantime, this will all back up, and then it's just the west that's getting stuck because cryothium, but even that will build up in time. Now, the stuck cores are being made up there, and then we just need one more crafter with a item conduit set to a limited filter. Oh, I've already got one. And then that gets to be set to the nether star directions. So we need a core, we need a north, east, south, and west. Good, that should be everything we need. Yep, perfect. So now we're just gonna need another interface so that we can set all of those over here. Perfect. Now this gets to have core, north, uh, east, south, and west. Good, now we need ME conduits. Oh, right, I can actually just go like this. No, I can't because that's a storage drawer. How is this? Oh, it's connected along there, okay. Good, now give me all of these back then. Perfect. Good. So this should now be exposing all of those. And then we just need to extract here on brown and then insert here on brown. Perfect. And then lastly, we just need to tell it to actually make the nether star. Good. And then give me another draw. Put that away, put that away. Can get rid of all of those. Good. Now. I'm just, we'll do a draw downgrade for now, but later on I'll hopefully want to increase the um, quantity of nether stars in a draw. Um, as I said, though, for now, this should just work. Perfect. Good. So we're now getting nether stars. Perfect. So next step is going to be, we need to make nether star fluid. So that's pretty easy. We can just go here. This is a end steel, which is EV. Cool, we need a fluid extractor of EV tier. There's one, good. And then a item conduit, item filter. We will come do it, and we're going to need a tank of some sort. Which let's just do a normal Ender IO tank for now. You we need one of those, which can be set to Nether Star. Perfect. You insert. Good. Now this here can expose Nether Stars for us, and we're getting Nether Star fluid. Perfect. Molten Nether Star. Now, here we need a fluid uh, filter. Good. That has already been connected. You don't touch that. You get to insert. What? Ah, oh, right. Insert Nether Star Morton on black. You get to extract on black. Perfect. So that's going up into there. Good. Now we need a fluid storage bus. And we need a fluid cable. That gets to go there. Extract only. Boom. Good. So we now should have multiple nether star in our applied logistics system. There it is. 
and that'll slowly climb up as required. Now we want super con super super yeah superconductor good. So superconductor we get through this process that is no superconductor ingot. No, perfect. Okay. So the we need draconium wire. I don't think I've actually automated draconium wire yet. So let's go grab a pulverizer. Uh, it can be IV, fine, that's what this line is. And then it needs a iron conduit. Draconium ingot, that's hot. You, draconium ingot, insert and extract on black. Perfect. Now we just need to put draconium ingot available. And then we again need a draw and a downgrade. Good, so that's fine. Now we just need the power, which is lumium. Yep, good, you lumium cable. Good, that should, that's wrong. Uh, cool. Well, I think this draconium dust will just get converted back automatically anyway, so that'll be fine. We need a wire mill, not a pulverizer. I'm sure some of you noticed that as it was happening. But where is it? And that's ZPM. Okay, we'll cancel that. We don't need a ZPM wire mill. We need a IV tier. So let's see what we can do here. IV. We need electric motors. IV tier. Good. Make twenty of those. Go. We need. Platinum cable. Good, make 20 of those, go. We need IV machine. Good, make those. Cool. And there we go. Now that's a wire mill. Good. So that should just get draconium. There we go. Getting draconium wire, which then gets going to there. You're already set to extract. Good, it's working. Perfect. So that in a vacuum freezer with nether with a molten nether star will get us superconductor wire. Now we don't have space there to put it because we've put our implosion compressor there, but we can probably just throw it in here. So we need another vacuum freezer. And then that in order to make that we're going to need a whole lot of frost proof casings so show me this it's three yeah it's three by three cool good and then that let's go there perfect so it needs a energy input hatch, which we might as well make. Let's just check. This needs a. It needs to be at least IV tier. So, it, as this is just going to be a passive machine, I think I'm just going to run it at IV for now. The. In order to do that, we're going to need a lumium cable and a CEF set to IV okay CEF and a piece of lumium cable I don't actually see any of our smaller tier lumium oh fine fine use 16 cable and then that's just going to need some energy conduits to actually connect it to the system good and then finally we need an input and an output bus Uh, actually, it needs to be at least uh, LV because it needs to be able to have multiple inputs and then we need an output bus. Perfect. Good. Now, let me grab my Yetta wrench so I can point both of those to face the right direction. And yes, so we want item conduits. 
we'll grab two of those with a limited item filter. Into there. Uh, no, that won't work. That's right, it's a fluid. It's not a item for the second. So that can actually be an LUV. So item input, uh, input bus. There. So that points there. Now a fluid input hatch can go next to it, point upwards, and then we need an output bus here, pointing upwards. Perfect, so now we need an interface, which can go there. Now this interface needs to connect to our ME conduit, which is not yet running along here. Oh, there we go. I think that connected it. So we need draconium wire, 1x. Good. So that's there. Now we need fluid bus. Uh, not 100% that this is going to work. Okay. So this gets to go there. That gets to have nether, molten nether. Perfect. Change the plans. This is going to become two interfaces. Move you out of the way. Good. So one goes there, one goes there. You are just going to be accepting. You are going to have those. And then those will go into the input bus. And finally, we can just cable across the top of all of these at which point that should get everything it needs. And there you go, it's running, perfect, and it should be making superconductor, good. And then what we wanna do, I think we wanna actually stop this. So let's put a machine controller here with a, let's toggle it, invert. Good, so we need a, uh, a level emitter, which can go there with that. This is going to be set to superconductor, and then we want to have, let's say, 200 semi superconductor wire. Good, and then this can just go there, uh, less than. Good, that should get you running. You are on when levels are below the limit. Right, you, normal. Perfect, and then we can grab a storage bus while we're at it, just to point us at the fact that this is producing superconductor. Good. Perfect, so we get, we've got superconductor wire, and let's lock that, uh, yep, good. Now let's put away our spare stuff here. Good, and then the rest of this can all just go back into our system. Good, so, superconductor wire done. Next step would be to make the superconductor, superconducting coil block, uh, which is used to make a electric bus furnace 9,001K, so superconducting coil block in an assembler. Let's get to work on getting that up and running. Okay, this config8, easy. So config8, there. Perfect. And so that should just work we're just going to need a whole lot of superconductor wire before we can do that. Let's actually go over here and change this so that it's making 512. There we go. Now, we're just, in the meantime, we're gonna to have to wait on that. I did make another couple of assembly lines here. And so these assembly lines have basically been set up to make the motors, arms, 
mainframes crystal processor arrays but unfortunately so this particular assembly line here is still making the conveyors and the pistons only because that line is the one that's set up with our config cards and the these here are all 11 long and I could rework the design slightly to actually make them uh, an extra block or two long and probably that would allow me to get things up and working but what I'm thinking is so each of these cobblestone sections here is a is two assembly lines that can go in and so I'm thinking I'll just have maybe four assembly lines that are set up to make those conveyors and pistons and yeah we can basically have sets of four assembly lines dedicated to certain things and then the remainder will be set up for just sort of batch processing or all, all the stuff that what's uh, parallel processing but we'll have to see how things go in regards to that later in the meantime let's take a look semiconductor superconductor we're only up to 43 so we are just going to have to wait on that the if i do try to speed things up it'll break because we just don't have enough cryothium coming through and that's because we're using the cryothium to make gelid a uh, liquid gelid cryothium and f i think i made the mistake of using a quantum tank for that. Yeah, that's the nether star. Oops. Hydrofluoric chloroform. Uh, yeah, okay. There you go, molten cryothium. And so this tank just, we're up to four million. So what I might do is I might actually just stop the extract here. just so that we can start to build up some cryothium dust because four million, the problem is if that does run out and that will run out when we get to, after we make 4,000 more draconium because this is what's running our vacuum freezer with the hot draconium ingots. And it uses two buckets per ingot, so that will actually only do 2,000 more draconium ingots. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna have to keep a close eye on it because last time it ran out, I didn't notice for quite some time and then this absolutely filled up with hot draconium ingots and would have caused problems for us. But what I will probably do is I will aim to actually replace that quantum tank because frankly that quantum tank has is, is trying to fill up with so much that it's never going to get anywhere near there anywhere near actually full and so i think what i'll do is i'll replace it with a just a normal ender io fluid tank which holds 16 buckets and that will allow us to um there you go, there's already 16 there. It will uh, allow us to build up a backlog again of the cryothium dust, even though Draconium Ingot is on passive. But that's something I'm going to have to do later on. And you can put that away, you throw that away. Good. Now, we can, we can probably make eight of these, actually. Missing 64. Oh, oh, it's 2x superconductor wire that you need for these. Okay, so that needs 2x's, yep, which can be made in our molecular assembler. So in that case, you, to make 16 of these, yeah, that's going to use 256, four whole stacks of superconductor wires. So the 200 we were telling it to make before was never going to be enough. And that um, in order to make 16, we'll use half of what we've told it to passively make there. So yes, we're absolutely going to shoot through nether stars and draconium in order to get both, in order to get this up and running. But 
once we've done that, we will then be able to get our fusion reactor online. In the meantime, I'm just going to have to wait on those two passively craft in the background, and then that'll allow us to get the superconductor coil block. Hopefully, next episode, we will be able to get the fusion reactor up and running. But that we'll have to do for this episode, we'll have to try to do that in the next one. Thank you for watching. Stay happy and healthy, and I hope to see you then.